Hey awak, awak yang tu lah. Jangan lupa subscribe channel kita. Tanda sokongan. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Jadi kepada pelajar-pelajar yang baru tiba dekat channel ini, jangan lupa tekan butang subscribe dan sharekan channel Madam Fika Fiki dengan kawan-kawan yang lain. Jadi bagi memenuhi permintaan beberapa orang sahabat kita uh, daripada Husna contohnya kan, harap Madam boleh buat lagi macam ni untuk tahun ni. Okey, tahun ni maksud dia semester 2 punya final exam preparations lah. Okey, dan Aina Nazira pun ada tulis, Madam please buat content untuk final PSPM 2. Okey, bukan saya tak nak buat content. Okey, tapi kekangan masa eh seperti anak-anak pelajar tahu kita sedang dalam fasa begitu rushing untuk habiskan silibus. Okey, jadi bagi memenuhi permintaan anak-anak pelajar untuk uh, final exam preparation bagi uh, semester 2, apa kita tunggu lagi? Jom kita mula untuk set yang pertama. Okay, so let's start with question number one. So we have two parallel metal plates are connected to a 120 volt battery as shown in figure one here. Okay, and calculate the electric field intensity between the plates. This is straightforward question. So for number one, we want to calculate the electric field intensity between the plates. So E is equal to V over D. So V is given 120 volt, so we can straightly substitute and D is the separation between the metal plates and it is um, 2 cm, okay, based on the diagram. So make sure you change to meter first, so 0 0.02 and the final answer is equal to 6.0, okay, exponent 10 power of 3 volt per meter, okay. So, this is the answer. Alright. So, number 2. A2. Uh, calculate the force on an electron in between the plates. So, let's say we have an electron that located between A and B. So, we can calculate what is the force on an electron. So, now we already know the value of the electric field intensity between the plates. So, we can calculate what is the electric force on that electron by using this equation F is equal to the charge of the electron times the electric field strength between the plates. Okay, so this is very easy. So we just substitute Q, the charge of electron 1.6 exponent negative 19 and times the electric field 6.0 exponent 3 and the final answer is equal to 9.6 exponent negative 16 Newton. Okay. So, jangan lupa. Jangan lupa unit. Okay. So, number 3. Okay. So, A3. So, we want to calculate what is the loss in the potential energy by an electron when the electron move from plate B to plate A. Okay. So, we can calculate what is the change of the potential energy between the plate. Okay, so we can use the equation delta U is equal to the charge of the electron times the uh, potential difference between the plate. As we know, the potential difference between the plate is 120 volt. Alright, so we can calculate what is the change in the potential energy. So dari situ kita boleh kira lah the loss in potential energy. As we know, the change of the potential energy is U final minus U initial. So, sebab kita nak cari the loss in the potential energy. So, potential energy final minus dengan potential energy initial. Okay. So, by using this equation. So, sebab kita dah ada maklumat delta V. We can straightly substitute Q and also delta V. Okay. So, masukkan maklumat semua. So, this is 120. Okay. And the answer is 1.92 exponent negative 17 joule. Okay. That's all. Okay. So, finish 1A and let's look at to question 1B. Okay. So, 1B. Okay. For 1B, here we have two charges. Q1 is given equal to uh, negative 2. 
okay negative 2 microcoulomb while q2 is negative 3 microcoulomb and the position of q1 and q2 okay is 10 centimeter apart all right so we have a point m so given that if M is the midpoint between those two charges, determine the electric potential at point M. Okay, so let's say we have point M here. So means that from point M to Q2 is 5 cm. And from point M to Q1 also 5 cm. Okay, because point M dekat tengah-tengah. So we want to calculate what is the... Uh, potential electric potential at point m okay so remember when we talk about electric potential okay electric potential which is v we want to calculate v make sure in your calculation you must include the positive or negative sign in calculation okay selalunya negative sign lah pelajar confused tak masukkan bila ni okay remember for electric potential and potential energy. Okay, potential energy. Dua ni, V dengan U. So, in your calculation, you must consider, okay, or include negative sign of the charge, okay, in your calculation. Ingat. Okay, untuk V dengan U. Tapi, pada point M, contoh kita nak cari what is the electric potential at point M. Okay, no need to draw the direction on M. Saya selalu pesan, no need to draw direction. Okay, sebab so ini bukan vector. Okay, so no need to draw direction on M. For example lah, sebab so point kita untuk soalan ni adalah M. Okay, tapi kalau kita nak kira, okay, Kalau kita nak kira electric field and electric force, dia terbalik. For electric field and electric force, okay, no need to include, okay, sebab so pangkah, no need to include negative sign in your calculation. Okay, tapi you must draw. Okay, you must draw first, okay, the direction. Direction apa terpulang lah. Okay, you must draw the direction of the electric field at point M for example. Or you must draw uh, the direction of the electric force. Okay. Between charge 1 and charge 2 for example lah. Okay. Contoh macam tu. Okay. So dua ni kena tahu. Bila masa nak masuk negative sign. Bila masa you tak perlu masuk negative sign. Okay. So look at the diagram. So, you want to calculate V, tak perlu pun nak lukis apa-apa direction. Okay, so kita terus saja tulis. You want to calculate the total okay, electric potential at point M. Okay, so total Vm. So, kita ada dua charge. So, potential due to charge 1 plus due to charge 2. Okay, and then we just substitute K due to charge 1 Q1 over the distance between point M and and charge 1 adalah R1. Okay, formula jangan silap, jangan masukkan squared. So, KQ2 over R2. Okay, so here uh, we have the equation and then we need to substitute all the values. So, masukkanlah semua. We have 9 exponent 9 and then KQ1. Okay, remember we have negative microcoulomb. Okay, tengok sini saya masukkan negative Okay, and over the distance between point M and Q1 is 5 cm. Make sure you change to meter. Okay, and plus, okay, plus 9 exponent 9. So, Q2 is negative 3 exponent negative 6 over 0 0.05. Okay, so, I highlight negative because this is electric potential. Okay. And last kali, final answer is negative 9.0 times 10 power of 5 volt. Okay, so this is the final answer. Okay, so second, we want to calculate what is the electric field strength. Okay, remember, bila saya kata bila electric field ataupun electric force, 
mesti draw direction of the electric field ataupun electric force at that point ataupun on that charge. Okay, dan dalam calculation, please don't include negative sign of the charge lah. Okay, so let's start. Okay, number two. So on point M, so this is my point M. So we need to consider M as the positive point. So here we have negative charge Q2 and this is also negative charge. Okay, so let's draw the direction at point M. So positive, negative. Okay, positive, negative. So the direction should be to the right. So kita letak E2. That's mean the electric field on M due to Q2. Okay, so this is also due to Q1. Okay, remember this is positive, this is negative. So this point would be attracted to Q1 lah direction dia. So positive will be attracted to the negative. So same goes to this one. Positive will be attracted to the negative. Okay, negative charge. Okay, so now let's try to write the answer. Okay, so we have total, total electric field at point M is equal to E2, positive E2 because the direction is to the right here and plus negative E1. Okay, don't forget to put negative for E1 because the direction is to the left. Okay, plus negative E1. Ha, tengok kat situ. So, saya highlightkan negative ni. So, saya awak tahulah kenapa dia negative. Ha, saya dah cakap dah tadi kan. Okay, so remember equation E. Ha, kalau tak ingat, saya lah equation kat depan. Okay, so R2 squared. Jangan tertinggal squared. Okay, R2 is the distance between point M and charge 2. Plus, okay, uh, plus tadi jadi minus lah. Saya terus letak minus. KQ1 over R1 squared. Okay, boleh. Alright, so substitute je lah semua. Okay, so let's substitute all the values. Buat masukkan 9, uh, Q2 berapa? 3 kan? 3 microcoulomb. Okay, so make sure you change R 5 cm to meter. Okay, itu, itu yang careless kecil-kecil lah. Yang awak selalu, selalu careless. Okay, mistake yang sangat tak patut dibuat. Okay, ha, sebab awak bukan tak tahu jawab nanti. Awak tahu jawab tapi sebab careless tu, lupa nak tukar. Jadi jawapan akhir awak akan salah. Okay, tak nak macam tu. So the final answer is 3.6. Exponent 6. Okay, unit dia adalah Newton per coulomb. Tolong ingat unit. Okay. Uh, jangan bagi unit yang uh, merepek. <laughs> okay. Okay, jadi kalau tengok pada soalan ni, dia kata determine the magnitude. Okay, dia dah sebut dekat situ. Magnitude of the electric field strength at point P. Okay, so yang kita kira ni. Okay, sekejap ya. Saya tukar color. Okay, yang kita kira ni adalah magnitude. Okay, kalau soalan tak sebut magnitude, contoh dia kata, calculate the electric field strength at M. Okay, at P, at X, apa-apa je lah kan. Okay, so kita mesti nyatakan magnitude and direction. Tapi sebab soalan ni dia dah kata magnitude, jadi tak salah lah kita tinggalkan answer in terms of magnitude only. Okay, tapi kalau soalan tak sebut magnitude, determine the electric field strength or calculate the electric field strength at M. Okay, you need to... Mention what is the direction. Okay, the direction of the uh, resultant electric field strength at point M. Okay, so direction dia. Awak tengok sini, jawapan akhir kita dapat positif. So, means that the direction is to the right. Okay. Direction is to the right. Ataupun, uh, based on this diagram, the direction is towards, towards Q2. Okay. So ini, okay, ini adalah vector quantity mesti ada magnitude and direction. Okay, so finish question number one. So let's proceed to question number two. Okay, question number two A. Okay, so we have a parallel plate F field capacitor and the capacitance is 250 picofarad. Okay, it's charged by a battery to a potential difference. V is equal to 12 volt. Okay, so let's say we have the capacitor here and this is the battery. Okay, 
So, where C is equal to 250 pico. Pico berapa? 10 power of negative 12 farad. Okay. And V. So, we have 12 volt. Alright. So, this is initially. Okay. Maknanya, asalnya kita chargekan lah kapasitor. Okay. And then, the charging battery is then disconnected. Okay. And a porcelain slab. So, it's given that epsilon R. Okay, epsilon R to apa? Epsilon R is the relative permittivity okay, of the porcelain slab. Okay, is inserted between the plates. Okay, so what happened then? Okay, after we disconnect the capacitor. Okay, and then this is the capacitor. Let's say we try to insert. Okay, uh, so contoh this is the porcelain. Okay, so given that ER is equal to 3.2. Okay, so initially and after lah or final. Okay. Uh, okay. So, calculate the capacitance of the capacitor after the slab is inserted. Okay, so for this question, you must remember the relationship between the capacitance without dielectric material and also the capacitance when we try to Insert the dielectric material between the plate. Maksud saya apa? Okay. Uh, tengok balik nota. Okay. Remember. Okay. Saya so letak kat sini. Remember. Okay. Kecilkan sikit eh. Okay. So remember the relationship between capacitance after. Okay. So C is the capacitance of the capacitor after we insert the dielectric material. Okay. And it's equal to. Okay. ER times C naught. C0 tu adalah capacitance of the capacitor without ataupun tanpa dielectric material ataupun kita kata air fill. Okay? Air fill capacitor. So, this is air fill capacitor. Okay? So, kena tahulah C equal to ER C0. Relative permittivity times dengan initial capacitance ataupun air fill capacitor tadi. Okay? Selain daripada tu, you must remember juga V, okay, uh, the voltage is equal to V0, okay, over uh, potential difference between the plates. V is the potential difference between the plates is equal to V0 initial ataupun uh, potential difference of the plate without the electric material V0 divide ER. So, relationship dia macam tu. Okay, so kena ingat. Okay, uh, apa lagi? Electric field E is equal to okay, relationship dia E0 over ER. Apa lagi? Okay. Dan last kali permittivity of dielectric okay. Permittivity of dielectric epsilon is equal to epsilon R time epsilon naught. Okay. Ha, so kena ingat lah. Ha, so ini apa dia? Ini adalah permittivity Okay of dielectric and this one tadi saya dah sebut relative okay relative permittivity and ini adalah okay permittivity okay sorry tulisan buruk eh of free space okay so kena tengok relationship dia macam itu boleh Ataupun nak senang ingat awak boleh je juga tulis di mana ER is equal to C over C naught. ER is equal to V naught over V is equal to E naught over E. And the last one ER, sorry ER pula, epsilon R is equal to epsilon over epsilon naught. Okay, ha, itu kita simplifikan lah ha, ini. So, untuk soalan ni, soalan nombor satu ni senang je. Sebenarnya, kita nak kira what is the what is the value of the capacitance selepas kita insert the uh, the porcelain tadi. Okay. So, kita akan guna C lah. So, kita dah ada C. So, C. Okay. Beza, apa beza C dengan C0 tadi? C0 without the electric material ataupun air fill capacitor. Okay. Air fill capacitance of the capacitor. Okay. So, saya guna formula yang ini saja. So, kita masukkan sejelah 3.2. So, C0 kita dah ada tadi iaitu 250 
picofarad. Okay. So last kali you akan dapat jawapan 8.0 exponent negative 10 farad. Okay, so this is the answer. Alright. And sama juga V untuk soalan yang kedua tu. Okay, benda yang sama. Okay, as long as you know the relationship between V and V0, C and C0. Okay, so calculate the potential difference between the plates after the slab is inserted. Okay, so V is equal to V0 over epsilon R and 12 over 3 over 2. Okay, and then it's equal to 3 point. 75 volt. Okay, so this is the answer. Selang je kan? Okay, so finish question 2A. Okay, so kita cuba tengok question 2B. Okay, how to answer question 2B? Okay, so question 2B. So we have a capacitor, okay, discharge through a resistor. Okay, so this is discharging process. Okay, and it loses 40% of its charge in 10 seconds. So, dalam masa 10 seconds, dia kehilangan 40% of its initial. Okay, so kalau kita nak katakan uh, Q final, okay, kalau Q initial adalah 100%, so after, so after T is equal to 10 seconds, so kita akan dapat uh, Q, the final charge is 60% lah which is 0 0.6 of initial charge, okay? So, because after 10 seconds, it loses 40% of its charge, okay? So, means that yang tinggal, the remaining charge after 10 seconds adalah 0 0.6 Q0, okay? So, saya letak dekat situ. Okay, so now we want to determine the time constant of the capacitor. So, time constant adalah tau lah, okay? Remember, time constant... Okay, tau is equal to RC. Okay, so we can write the equation. Okay, sekejap. Okay, so we can write the equation Q is equal to Q naught E negative T over RC. Where this is the time constant. So we can straightly change this RC. Q is equal to Q naught E negative T over tau. Okay, so we can substitute Q. So, we already know that Q is equal to 0 0.6 Q0. Walaupun soalan tak bagi berapa nilai Q0, masukkan je dulu, nanti you boleh cancel. Okay, jangan kata soalan tak cukup maklumat, saya tak boleh jawab. Okay, so this is 0 0.6 Q0 is equal to Q0 E negative 10. So, in 10 seconds, so we substitute T is equal to 10 seconds. Alright, so now we want to find tau. So, this one we can cancel. Okay, so ini adalah mathematics part. Okay, you take ln for both side. Okay, kita nak cancel E kan? Okay, so saya rasa ini semua orang dah hebat lah. Okay, so let's calculate what is the time constant ln 0 0.6 is equal to negative 0 0.5108 is equal to negative 10 over tau. Okay, therefore... Tau is equal to 19.576 seconds. Okay. So, kita dapatlah. Okay, the time constant. Alright. Okay, so to be 2 calculate the percentage of the energy that is still stored in the capacitor after 10 seconds. Okay, so we want to know what is the percentage of the energy after 10 seconds. Okay. So, macam mana kita nak buat ni? Okay, kita tulis dulu formula uh, energy stored in the capacitor which is U. Okay, so kita boleh uh, tulis dulu equation. Kita nak relate kan percentage of energy dengan charge tadi. Okay, sebab apa? Sebab the charge tadi telah berkurang kan? So, kita mesti relate kan lah equation of energy dengan charge stored in the capacitor juga. Okay. So now the equation that related to the energy stored in the capacitor and also the charge. So remember U is equal to half CV squared. Okay, now I'll find formula ni. Okay, and remember where Q is equal to CV. So when we try to rearrange this equation in order to get the new equation, okay, that related to U and charge. 
Okay, so saya akan tukar u is equal to half, okay, q squared over c. Okay, uh, substitute saja. Okay, gantikan situ. Okay, so kenapa? Sebab we want to relate the charge q and the capacitance c. Okay, uh, kita nak tengok. Okay, sebab apa? Okay, sebab apa saya nak buat macam ini? Okay, okay formula ni, kenapa saya nak buat macam ni? Okay, sebab we want to relate the charge q and the capacitance C since this one kita perlukan satu value yang constant lah since C is constant okay uh, the capacitance of the capacitor is constant okay uh, kalau V tak boleh lah initial tadi ada bateri uh, final kita cabut bateri so dia discharge tak boleh okay uh, so kita saya tak guna formula half CV squared okay so sekarang U berubah, okay, Q pun berubah. Hanya C saja yang constant. So, kita mesti relate lah. Kita kena pilih satu constant. So, since C is constant, so saya boleh tulis initial, okay. So, initial energy, kalau saya, saya akan tulis initial energy U, U0, okay, is equal to half Q0 squared over C. Okay, Q0 is the initial charge, okay. So, after 10 seconds, okay, final energy, final energy start, so U not, eh sorry, U lah, so final kan, so U is equal to half Q squared over C, okay, uh, Q dengan U saya letak U not and Q not, tapi C saya tak letak lah sebab dia constant, okay, so now, uh, ataupun saya nak letak U prime lah, U prime dengan Q prime. Okay, so after 10 seconds, so you can write after 10 seconds. Okay, so the energy start, U prime, half Q prime squared over C. Where Q prime tu adalah charge final lah. Q prime tadi kita tahu dia tinggal 0.6 Q naught. So what is the next step? So we can substitute here. Half Q prime kita is 0.6 Q naught squared over C. Okay, so from here, we can rearrange the equation. So, it's equal to half 0 0.6. Okay, 0 0.6 squared Q naught squared over 2. Okay, half times 0 0.6 squared. Saya nak rearrange equation supaya, okay, supaya ini dan ini saya boleh tuliskan dia sebagai U naught. Okay, sebab kita nak tengok lah berapa persen yang, berapa persen yang tinggal. Okay, after 10 second. Okay, so kita boleh tulis U prime ataupun U final is equal to, okay, 0 0.6 squared is 0 0.36. Okay, dan ini, okay, kita bulatkan sikit. Dan ini, ini adalah, ini adalah U not. Okay, so 0 0.36 u not okay so now u prime is equal to 0.36 u not means that the final energy that still start in the capacitor after 10 second is 36 percent maknanya selepas 10 second after 10 second 36 percent of the energy left okay yang tinggal hanyalah 36 percent of the initial energy. Okay. So, jawapannya apa dia? 36%. Okay. So, finish question number 2. So, let's proceed to question number 3. Okay. So, question number 3A. Okay. So, we have uh, figure 3 here shows an electric current okay, consisting of a battery of EMF 9 volt. So, we have battery here and there is an internal resistance of 1 ohm here. Okay, two resistors and two switches. Okay, so we have two resistors and also two switches. Okay, and calculate the terminal potential difference of the battery. Okay, calculate the terminal potential difference of the battery. Okay, which is terminal voltage. The first case, if S1 is open and S2 is also open. Okay, kedua-duanya open. Okay, so let's try. To answer question number one lah. Okay, kalau kedua-duanya open, 
Lita ni tak lengkap lah kan? So, if S1 and S2 are open, means that the terminal voltage is equal to the voltage of the EMF. So, Vt is equal to 9.0 volt. Okay, uh, maknanya tak ada arus lah yang mengalir keluar. So, sama lah. Okay, sebab S1, S2 open, maknanya switch off kan? Dua-dua tu switch off. So, V terminal is exactly equal to 9 volt. Alright. So, let's look at to the second case. If S1 is closed and S2 is open. Okay, this time S1 is closed. Okay, and S2 is open. Means that we only have this circuit to refer. Okay, so let's look at question number two. Okay, so the circuit here is 9 volt and this is the internal and this is the external resistor. Okay, so the flow of current, so this is the flow of current I, okay, and we can calculate what is the value of I. Okay, so how to calculate the value of I? So remember the general equation, okay. When we have internal resistance of the battery in a circuit, so EMF, sorry, so EMF is equal to V terminal plus VR. Okay, remember this is what we want to find. Okay, so EMF, okay, the voltage of the battery is equal to terminal voltage plus the voltage across the internal resistance okay so when we try to expand this equation okay v terminal is equal to the current of the circuit times the value of the total external resistance okay total external resistance so for this case we just have one external resistance okay kita ada satu saja resistor dekat sini so r kita 3 ohm saja Okay, remember, okay, voltage across terminal related to external resistance, IR. Kalau ada 2, 3, 4 external resistance, then you need to total up all the resistance in the circuit. Okay, so plus I times small r. Small r means that internal resistance. So here we have internal resistance is equal to 1. Okay, so before we calculate Vt, okay, remember we want to calculate the terminal voltage is equal to IR. So we want to find the terminal voltage. We already know what is the value of capital R, tapi kita tak tahu nilai I. Okay, so you nak kira nilai I, you kena guna cara yang ini. Tulis dulu general equation. Okay, between EMF, terminal voltage and voltage across internal resistor. Okay, so now I is equal to EMF over R plus R. So EMF is 9, internal is 3, sorry, external is 3 plus internal 1. Okay, so finally current is equal to 2.25 ampere. Alright, so what is the next step? You need to substitute the current in this equation. Therefore, the terminal voltage is equal to okay, 2.25 ampere of current times the external resistor. External resistor kita berapa dia punya resistance? 3. Okay, so V terminal is equal to 6.75. 6.75 volt. Okay, so this is the answer. Okay. And the third case, now S1 and S2 both close. Okay, uh, dua-dua switch on lah. S1 and S2 close tu maknanya dua-dua switch on. Okay, maksudnya yang inilah. Okay, dua-dua close. Okay, so kita tengok circuit kita. Macam mana kita nak buat pula untuk case yang ketiga. Okay, so saya padam dulu jawapan ni tadi. Okay, saya padam dulu. Okay, so kita akan proceed to the third case. Okay, number three. Okay, so now you get here, we have R1 here. Okay, kita label lah. R1 
and this is R2. Okay, so now in order to simplify the circuit, I will combine R1 and R2 first. Since R1 and R2 are in parallel. Okay, so let's try to draw the new circuit. So when we try to combine this, okay, saya tulis sekejap ya. So ini, eh, so ini adalah parallel. So let's try to draw. So this is parallel. So the new circuit would be like this. Okay. Sama kan macam kes yang tadi tu. Cuma sekarang the external resistance mesti combine lah berapa. Kita kena kira. Okay, R1 plus R2. Okay, they are in parallel. Okay, so this one 9 volt and internal still 1 ohm. Okay, and here is the uh, direction of the current I. Okay, so let's try to calculate what is the total external resistance. Okay, so 1 over R12 equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Okay, I'm sure... Uh, you can calculate what is the value of R12 correctly. So 1 over R12 is equal to 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6. Jangan careless. Okay. So R12 you akan dapat 2 ohm. So here is 2 ohm. Okay. So after calculation, here is 2 ohm. And cara yang sama macam kita buat tadi. So let's try to calculate what is the current flow in the circuit. Okay. So, saya tulis dekat sini ya. EMF is equal to I R total plus R. Okay. Ha, ingat tak cara tadi? R total plus R. So, I equal to EMF over R total plus R. Okay. Ha, sama je macam tadi. Okay. So, cari dulu EMF is 9. R total tadi kita dah kira. R12 is 2 plus internal 1. Therefore, Current for the third case is 3 ampere. So, kita dah dapat nilai current. Kita boleh kira, kita boleh kira apa? V terminal. Where V terminal is equal to current I times R total. Okay, external. The total external resistance. Kita dah kira tadi ada 2 ohm. So, 3 R total kita adalah R12. Okay. Darab dengan 2. Okay. So, final answer V terminal for the third case is equal to 6 volt. Alright. So, we finish question number number 3. Okay. 3A lah. Okay. Kita akan proceed to question 3B. Okay. For question 3B, we have two batteries in figure 4. Okay. And the internal resistance is negligible. Alright, so calculate the current in the circuit. Okay, so how to calculate the current in the circuit. Okay, so remember Kirchhoff law. Okay, but this time we just have one circuit only. But this time we just have one loop. Okay, so the second one we want to calculate what is the potential difference between X and Y. Okay, so look at here. Okay, so first step, look at the battery. Okay, so I will look at to the battery and the question give you the flow of current. The direction is like this. Okay, so kita lukis dulu. So this is the flow of current. Okay, and then, so remember, for a battery, the current must flow from positive terminal. Okay, so saya akan tulis dulu yang kecil, arrow kecil ni. Okay, so selalu pesan dekat student. Saya akan lukis dulu arrow kecil itu. Okay. To show you that the current. Okay. The characteristic of current is current flow from positive terminal to the negative terminal. Right. Okay. So, ah, saya letak yang kecil. And then, I will draw my loop. So, loop saya saya akan follow. Okay. Saya akan follow loop current lah. Untuk memudahkan saya nanti. Okay. So, this is very simple. So, by using the second law of Kirchhoff rule, okay, so I can tell total EMF is equal to total IR. Okay, kita ada satu loop je. So, saya guna ini. Okay, ha, tak ada junction-junction. Untuk soalan ni tak ada. Kalau nak soalan Kirchhoff, you boleh tengok video ha, yang seterusnya lah yang saya letak kat link kat atas ni. Okay, awak boleh tengok kat situ ada chapter 
chapter 3 punya uh, solution untuk kecof. Okay. So now look at this circuit. So here we have uh, 2 EMF. Okay. This time tengok betul-betul. Okay. So look at the loop. Okay. The direction of the loop is upward for this one. And look at the small arrow here. Okay. Yang dekat bateri yang saya lukis tadi. Sama tak direction dia. Same direction. Okay. So means that the value of EMF here should be positive. Okay. So saya letak 20 plus. Okay. Total kan. Ha, so plus lah. Kita nak total up all the EMF in the circuit. Okay. So how about this one? The second one. So look at the arrow. Okay. The small arrow here is upward. But the loop yang kita lukis, the direction is downward. So, opposite direction. So, the value of this EMF must be negative. Okay, so plus negative 15. So, equal to, okay, so total kan I times R. So, look at here, we have four resistors. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4. And the current will flow in this circuit in one way. Tak ada junction. Means that the value of the current that pass through 70 ohm, 60 ohm, 40 ohm and 30 ohm are the same value of current I. Okay. Ha, tak perlulah awak nak pecah-pecahkan dia. Okay. Sebab dia bukan dua, dua loop. Okay. So I. So R dia kita totalkanlah 70 plus 60 plus 40 plus 30. Sebab ada 4 kan. Therefore, we can calculate the current I and it's equal to 5 over 5 over 200. Okay. So, I is equal to 0 0.00 sorry, 0 0.025 ampere. Unit jangan jangan lupa. Okay. So, finish question 3B1. Okay. For 3B2 Okay, we want to calculate what is the potential difference between X and Y. Okay, so look at here. Okay, we want to calculate X and Y. Okay, so cara yang paling mudah. Okay, tengok kita nak kira X dengan Y dekat sini. So, apa yang kita boleh buat. Okay, kita tulis dulu soalan. Eh, nombor soalan. Okay, so tulis dulu. V, X, Y. Ada dua cara. Okay, kenapa saya kata ada dua cara? Okay, yang pertama sama ada you nak tengok this side. Okay, ataupun you nak tengok this side. Okay, so let's say saya tengok yang turquoise color. Okay, so saya cuba yang turquoise color dulu. Okay, kita letak VXY. Okay, VXY. Sekejap eh, saya buat arrow dia dulu. Okay, so tadi kita tengok arrow dia macam ni kan. Okay, so VXY. Okay, so VXY minus. Kenapa minus? Okay, sama macam tadi. Okay, kita kumpulkan all the voltage in one side. So, kita ada VXY. Okay, VXY here. Plus negative because this, this arrow and the direction of the loop is opposite direction. Okay, VXY plus, okay. Plus negative 15. Okay. Ha, saya kumpulkan all the voltage one side. Termasuk VXY yang kita nak kira. Voltage across XY. Okay. Equal to. Okay. Tengok the turquoise side. Okay. Kita ada apa? Kita ada 30. And the current also. So here we have 30 ohm resistor and 70 ohm resistor. And the current that flow uh, through the both resistor are the same. Okay. So, we can write I times 30 plus 70. Okay. So, I tadi kita dah dapat. Therefore, VXY is equal to 0 0.025 times 100. Okay. 15 buat pergi sebelah plus 15. Okay. And the final answer is equal to 17.5 volt. Okay, ini kalau kita tengok yang one side tadi tu lah. Okay, let's say we try to look at the orange. Okay, the orange part ataupun orange group. Okay, which is your right hand side lah. Okay, nah, kita tengok sekejap. Okay, kita buat macam tu. So, sekarang kita tengok 
the orange side okay so we want to calculate what is the uh, potential difference between x and y okay so let's draw the uh, the loop okay from x kita tengok from x to to y kan so loop dia saya lukis macam ni tadi yang merah ini dia macam ni eh kejap okay so merah ini dah akan jadi from x to y ha, macam tu loop dia okay so kalau you nak tengok yang the orange side so we can write vxy okay plus okay the voltage here look at the direction of the loop and the positive terminal is opposite direction right so kita nak cek vxy cara nak lukis loop ni awak tulis macam tu lah okay loop dia daripada x ke y x ke y okay kita nak cari vxy between x and y so now this is negative 20 since the direction of the purple color here and the red color here is opposite direction okay so dia akan jadi plus negative 20 and it's equal to oops sorry and it's equal to okay this time look at the direction of current pula kalau macam ni tadi for the turquoise group okay the direction of current yang color biru dengan yang red color is the same direction that's why here is positive value okay i the positive but for this time look at the direction of current okay the direction of current so this direction of current yang blue ni tadi i so now look at the direction of the blue arrow and the purple arrow they are opposite direction right so we can write here is negative i because the direction is opposite okay so the total of the resistors is 40 plus 60 okay so we can straightly calculate what is v x y and it's equal to negative 0 0.025 times 100 okay plus okay negative 20 bawa pergi sebelah so akan jadi plus 20 okay so the answer of v x y is equal to 17.5 volt Okay, so kita dapat juga jawapan yang yang sama. Okay, untuk kes yang ini. Okay, soalan yang ini dah lama dah tak keluar. Calculate what is the potential difference between X dan Y. Dah ambil tengah-tengah. Okay, dan uh, mungkin dah takkan keluar. Okay, kita tak tahu. Okay, so boleh cubalah sebagai you punya exercise. Okay, kecof boleh refer kepada video chapter 3 yang saya dah buat. Boleh? Okay. Alright, so finish question number 3. Let's proceed to question number 4. Okay, question number 4. Okay, we have 150 ohm resistor. So, here is 150 ohm resistor. It's connected to a coil with 30 turns. So, the number of turns. Hmm, satu dekat tepi ni lah. Okay, so the number of turns is 30. Right? And the cross-sectional area is given 0 0.02 meter squared. Okay, please check the unit. Okay, so ini dah dalam SI unit. 0 0.02 meter squared. Okay, so a magnet is lowered as shown in figure 4. Okay, so means that uh, the bar magnet will move closer to the coil. Alright, so what happened? The magnetic field increase. So as we know, when the bar magnet here try to move uh, closer to the coil so the magnetic field around the coil will increase kan sebab kenapa sebab magnet ni sendiri dia ada magnetic field dia bila magnetic bar ni datang dekat dengan coil so there is a change of the uh, magnetic field around the coil and it increased from 0 0.01 tesla to 0 0.06 tesla in 20 millisecond so there is a change of uh, B lah. So, DB. So, B final minus B initial. So, B final is 0 0.06 and B initial is 0 0.01. Okay. And the time, the change of time is 20 millisecond. Okay. 20 millisecond. Okay. Iaitu 20 milli berapa milli? 10 power of 3 second. Okay. 20... Eh. Sorry, 20 millisecond. Okay, so ini maklumat yang kita ada. 
Alright, so determine the magnitude and direction of the induced current going through the resistor. So we want to calculate what is the magnitude of the induced current that passed through the resistor and what is its direction. So now look at the magnetic bar. So when the magnetic bar moves closer to the core, so what happened based on the Lenz law, okay, the top of the core will be north pole, okay. Nah, kenapa? Sebab dia nak repel kan? Dia tak nak ada perubahan dalam magnetic field. Okay. So, bila magnetic bar datang dekat-dekat coil, magnetic field akan increase and based on the Lenz law, it will try to oppose the change of the magnetic field. Dia nak cuba tolaklah magnetic bar tadi. Alright. So, ini akan jadi north and this would become south. Okay. So, now by using your right hand grip rule, macam mana caranya? Okay, your thumb should be pointing. Tangan kanan eh, right hand grip rule. Your thumb is pointing upward. Ha, cuba buat sama-sama, okay. The thumb is pointing upward and jari yang lain, the other fingers will curl in uh, anti-clockwise direction. So, dia akan curl macam ni lah. Okay, in anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so dia akan pusing. Ha, bawah ni pun pusing. Okay, pusing lagi. And then in this direction, so dia akan ke sini, I. So, this is the direction of the induced current. Okay, so kita dah dapat the direction of the induced current. Okay, where the direction of the induced current that pass through the uh, resistor is upward. Okay, uh, direction dah dapat. Tapi sekarang kita nak kira pula the magnitude of the induced, induced current. Right? Yes. So, we want to calculate the magnitude of the induced current. Berapa dekat sini? Okay, so kita kira dulu induced EMF. Okay, we write the equation, it's equal to negative Na dB over dt. So, since we have the change of the magnetic field, sebab tadi magnetic bar datang dekat, dekat coil, so there is a change of the magnetic field. Okay, so we can substitute the number of turns is 30, the area is 0 0.02 and the change of the magnetic field is 0 0.05. B final minus B initial, remember, over the time is 20 millisecond okay 20 millisecond all right and then the induced emf kita akan dapat nilai dia is equal to negative 1.5 okay so negative 1.5 volt all right so belum jawapan lagi soalan tanya induce induce current that pass through the resistor so remember Induced EMF is equal to induced current times the value of the resistance. Okay, so we can find induced EM, sorry, induced current is equal to induced EMF over R. Masukkanlah nilai dia. Okay, so 1.5 over 150 volt. Sorry, 1.5 over 150 ohm. Okay, so the answer is equal to Ah, berapa? Ah, cuba kira. Okay. So, the answer is equal to 0 0.01 ampere. Okay. So, this is the final answer. Okay. So, for question 4B. Okay. So, we have a primary coil of a cylindrical core with the length of 50 cm. And the diameter is given 3 cm. And the number of turns is 1000 turns. Okay. So, saya keluarkan dulu maklumat semua. Okay, primary, the length is 50 times 10 power of negative 2 meter. Saya tukar kepada meter. And the diameter of the primary coil is 3 centimeter. Okay. And, yeah, you can calculate what is the radius. Okay, bagi dua lah. Which is 1.5 exponent negative 2 meter. And the number of turns for the primary is equal to 1000. Okay, so let's say this is the primary coil. Okay. Okay, better. Okay. So the questions uh, state that. Okay. So the questions state that if the secondary coil has 50 turns. So means that this is the primary Okay, so let's say we have the second one which is secondary coil. 
Ha, contohlah ni secondary coil kita. Okay. Okay, where the number of turns for the secondary is 50. Okay. So, we want to calculate question number 1. Calculate its mutual inductance. Okay. So, this is very simple. We can straightly substitute all the values by using equation of the mutual inductance. Okay. Mu naught and primary times and secondary and the area of the coil over the length. Okay. So, substitute all the values. So, mu naught is 4 pi exponent negative 7. Okay. Primary is 1000. Secondary is 50. Area is pi r squared. So, pi times r, the radius saya dah kira tadi 1.5 exponent negative 2 squared. Okay. Over the length is 50. Okay. 50 centimeter. Okay, and the answer is equal to 8.88 exponent negative 5 Henry. Okay, so the unit is Henry. Okay, so for B2, calculate the induced EMF in the secondary coil if the current flowing in the primary coil changes at the rate of 4.8 ampere per second. So it's given that the rate of current change, okay, in primary coil is equal to 4.8 ampere per second. Okay. So, kita nak buat apa lagi ni? Ah, kira induce current. Okay. So, sorry. Kira induce EMF. Induce EMF in the secondary coil is equal to, okay, what is the formula? Okay, relatekan dengan mutual inductance. Is equal to mutual inductance times dengan siapa yang ada perubahan current tadi? Dekat dalam primary. Okay. So, di I over dt for the primary. Okay, therefore, okay, EMF of the secondary coil is equal to, so here is 8.88 exponent negative 5, alright, times 4.8. Okay, so I'm going to bagi tadi 4.8 and the final answer is equal to 4.26. Okay, 4.26 exponent negative 4 volt. Okay, so this is the answer. Boleh? Okay, good. Okay, and question C. Okay, so let's try question C. Okay, for C. Okay, question C. Suppose the induced electromotive force of a double loop. Okay, so I learn double loop. Okay, so double loop means that N is equal to 2. Okay. Has a magnitude of 1.1 volt. So, dia dah bagi dah. Okay. So, the induced EMF. Okay. So, the induced EMF is equal to 1.1 volt. Okay. When the change in magnetic flux is 0 0.683 river. Okay. So, the change of magnetic flux is given 0 0.683 river. Okay. How much time has elapsed for the flux change? So, we want to calculate what is the change of time dt. Okay. So, based on the Faraday's law, okay, induced EMF is equal to the number of turns, alright, times the change of magnetic flux. Okay. So, kita nak cari inilah dt. Sorry, kita nak cari inilah dt. Okay. So, dt is equal to n d5 over induced emf okay so you can so we can substitute so take bawah lah okay so n is 2 sorry okay so n is 2 okay the change of magnetic flux is 0 0.683 over induced emf is 1.1 okay and it's given dt is equal to 1.2 and finally, dt is equal to 1.24 second. Okay, so this is the answer. Okay. How about D? Kita buat kat sebelah saja. A coil made of 0. Okay, so a coil made of 25 loops. Each of area is 0 
Okay, so N is equal to 25 and the area is equal to 0 0.01 meter squared. It's rotated about an axis perpendicular to the to the earth magnetic field. Okay, uh, so maknanya kita ada uh, magnetic field B lah ni. Okay, 5 times 10 power of negative 5 Tesla and the frequency when the coil is rotate is equal to 60 hertz. Untuk soalan D ni, dia berkaitan dengan rotating coil. Okay, so remember the equation of the induced EMF for rotating coil okay, is equal to NBA omega sine theta. Okay, ingat lagi tak ni? Okay, formula ni semua. Okay, so this is the formula. Okay, so we want to calculate what is the peak EMF generated by the coil. So soalan pun dah kata, Okay, the coil is perpendicular to the earth magnetic field. Okay, so the coil is perpendicular to the earth magnetic field. Okay, so uh, means that what is the peak EMF? So, we look at the peak EMF. So, ini akan jadi 90 degree lah. Sin 90 degree. Okay, nah, kita nak kira maximum e uh, induced EMF kita. Okay, so we can straightly substitute lah. Induced EMF. Is equal to N. N kita 25. B kita 5 exponent negative 5. Area dia dah bagi 0 0.01. But omega, remember omega is equal to 2 pi F. Okay, frequency 60. Okay, and times sine 90. 90 is equal to 1. Sine 90 is equal to 1. Therefore, induced EMF is equal to 4.7 exponent negative 3 okay Whoa. so this is the answer 4.3 exponent negative 3 volt boleh okay so let's proceed to question number 5 okay now so okay so for question 5a so this is from chapter alternating current Okay, so given that the RMS voltage produced across the capacitor and resistor. So, bila soalan sebut capacitor and resistor means that this is RC, RC circuit. Okay, so given that the voltage across capacitor is 1.5, so VC is 1.5 volt. Alright, and voltage across resistor is... VR is equal to 2.5 volt. Alright, means that when we have a diagram. Okay, sorry, we have R and C, not L. So, R and C, so this is RC circuit. Okay, R and C. So, the voltage across here is VR and this is VC. Okay, and this is the current flow and it's IRMS. Okay, so the current or IRMS that flow through the resistor and capacitor is the same value of IRMS. Okay, so some of you are confused. Okay, how to use the equation. Okay. So, Vc, remember, Vc is the voltage across capacitor, means that I RMS times Xc, bukan I RMS times C, okay? And Vr is equal to I RMS times R, okay? So, when we talk about peak voltage, okay, Voc, okay? Peak voltage across capacitor, it would be I not maximum current, bukan I RMS times C, and V not R is equal to I not R. Okay, nampak eh, beza dia. Okay, so for this question, we are given the expression of current. Okay, so the current flows is. The expression given is I equal to 2.0 sine 100 pi T. Okay. 
So let's write the general equation I is equal to I naught sine omega t. For this chapter, make sure your calculator is in radian mode. Okay. So this is I naught. So this is omega and this is I naught. Okay. Ah, nampak kan partner dia tu. Okay. So the first one, we want to calculate the RMS voltage. Ataupun VRMS. Okay. So let's write the answer. Number one, VRMS. Partner dia mesti IRMS. Okay. Tak boleh XC, tak boleh R. Okay. VRMS, partner dia adalah because this is the combination of R and C. So dekat sini, dia adalah impedance Z. So tak boleh ini. Tak boleh ini. So, dia adalah IRMS Z. Okay. So, VRMS, IRMS Z. VC, baru boleh. Kalau VC, voltage across capacitor sahaja, then IRMS XC. You nak VR, then IRMS R. Tapi, bila VRMS, IRMS, mesti Z. Bila ada combination of resistor, capacitor ataupun uh, RLC circuit, combine tiga-tiga, Ini mesti impedance. Okay. So, saya padam dulu sini. Okay. Saya so, tulis set. Okay. So, sekarang kita nak cari VRMS. Awak tengok ya. Kita tak ada Z. Okay. We cannot find Z. Okay. We can find IRMS. Okay. Remember kita ada I0. Okay. Saya so, tulis kat sini. I0 kita dapat iaitu 2.0 ampere. And from here boleh kita boleh cari IRMS. Di mana IRMS adalah I not bahagikan dengan set tu. Okay, jadi tengok dekat sini, kita boleh untuk cari IRMS. Okay, we can get the value of IRMS. But how about Z? We cannot find Z because we don't have value of R. Kita tak tahu pun berapa nilai R dan berapa nilai C kita. Capacitance, we don't know what is the value of capacitance and we don't know what is the value of Resistance. Tapi kita boleh cari tapi jalannya agak panjang. Kenapa saya kata jalannya agak panjang? Okay. Tengok sini. You nak kira Z. It's equal to square root R squared plus XC squared. Betul? Okay. So sekarang you don't have value of R and C. XC pun tak ada. Frekuensi pun tak ada. Tapi you boleh cari frekuensi. You kata boleh cari cikgu. XC is equal to. You kata XC is equal to 1 over 2 pi FC. Memang boleh cari. Tapi panjang cerita dia. Kenapa saya kata panjang cerita dia? Sebab you nak cari C. Eh, eh sekejap. Okay. Saya kata panjang ceritanya sebab you nak cari C dan F. Okay. Frequency you can find from omega. Remember omega is equal to 2 pi F. Okay. You boleh cari frequency nanti. Macam mana you nak cari C dan R? Macam mana you nak cari C dengan R? Masih boleh. Okay, tengok sini ya. Okay. So, I RMS kalau kita kira 2 bahagi set tu, kita akan dapat nilai berapa I RMS dia tu. Saya kira saya dapat 1.414. 1.414 ampere. Okay. So, sekarang kita punya... Um, Objektif kita nak cari R dulu kan untuk cari Z. Ha, dia cerita dia panjang lah. You nak cari R, you kena guna VR equal to I RMS R. Kan? Ha, lepas tu baru you dapat cari R. Itu baru dapat cari R. Okay, VR dia dah bagi tadi 2.5 bagi dengan I RMS 1.414. You baru dapat cari R. Lepas tu you nak cari C pula. You nak cari frekuensi pula. Okay? Ha. Lepas tu baru dapat cari Z, baru you boleh kira VRMS. Itu jalan kerja tu tidak salah tetapi uh, dia agak panjang lah. Ha, kalau kita nak pergi kedai, kita tak akan lalu jalan yang jauh kan. Kita akan bijak, oh nak lalu jalan yang dekat dan cepat sampai dan menjimatkan masa dan tidak meletihkan. Okay. Same goes to uh, this situation. We want to answer the question and we try to uh, we try to use the simplest way. Okay, in order to get the answer. Alright, so let's say, kalau saya, saya akan nak kira VRMS. Okay, 
So, kita ada VR. Where VR is equal to, uh, VR is equal to 2.5 volt and VC is equal to 1.5 volt. Okay. So, remember, okay, you have learned about phase diagram. Okay. Daripada kedua-dua ini, saya lukis saya punya phase diagram. So, this is my phase diagram where uh, VR is equal to 2.5 volt. And VC is equal to 1.5 volt. And the resultant voltage between VR and VC is VRMS. Remember, this is the phase angle. Okay. Okay, so from this diagram, we can find VRMS. Okay, by calculating the hypotenuse of a triangle. Okay, remember, we have VR. Okay, we have VC. And this is VRMS. So, look at here. This is the hypotenuse. VRMS. So, I want to find VRMS. Saya tak nak lalu jalan yang panjang tadi. Okay, cari IRMS. Okay, good. Boleh cari. And then, nak cari Z. You kena cari dulu R. You kena cari dulu C. You kena cari dulu F. Kira pula XC. Dapat Z. Baru kira VRMS. Okay. But if I use this method by using the phase diagram, Okay, we can straightly calculate. Therefore, VRMS is the hypotenuse of this diagram. You can see here. And it's equal to square root VR squared plus VC squared. Mungkin awak rasa macam uh, tak perasan. Sebenarnya, face diagram tu guide kita. How to calculate the VRMS. Okay, so let's substitute all the values. So, here we have 2.5 squared plus 1.5 squared. Therefore, VRMS is equal to, so VRMS is equal to 2.92 volt. Okay, so this is my final answer. Alright, and second, the question asks us to find the impedance of the circuit. This time, we can find impedance, okay, uh, by using the shortest way, okay. Uh, kenapa saya kata shortest way? Okay, so uh, shortest method. Okay, so VRMS, we already know what is the value of VRMS, right? And IRMS, Z. Okay, look at here. We do have the value of V and I already. Okay, I tadi kita dah kira kan? Uh, I, RMS equal to I naught over Z2. Remember, okay, dalam equation tadi kita ada I equal to 2.0 sin 100 pi t, this is not the value of I RMS. Ramai yang ambil ini sebagai I RMS. Salah. Okay. So, this is I not. Bukan I RMS. Okay. So, kena kira lah I RMS. So, we have calculated just now and I RMS is equal to 1.414 Ampere. Okay. So, you can find Z, VRMS over IRMS. Where V kita dah dapat ke atas tadi over I. 1.414 and it's equal to 2.06 ohm. Okay. So, this is my final answer. Boleh eh? Last one. Calculate the capacitance of the capacitor and the resistance of the resistor. Okay, so we want to calculate what is the capacitance of the capacitor which is C. Okay, uh, kalau dia kata uh, the reactance, okay, capacitance, reactance, XC. Tapi ni nak tanya capacitance saja. Okay, kita nak cari C and R. So, gunalah VR equal to I RMS R, partner dia. Okay, uh, VC is equal to I RMS XC. Uh, dia bukan nak XC, dia nak C. Okay, so R kita boleh kira R tak? Boleh lah. Okay, dah boleh dah. VR over I RMS. Di mana VR kita dapat tadi? Okay, ha, suka kita dapat soalan bagi 2.5 volt. I RMS kita dah kira 1.414. Okay. Therefore, R is equal to 1.77 ohm. Okay. So, ini jawapan untuk R. For C, 
Okay, kita nak cari frekuensi dulu kejap lagi. So, kita pergi dulu XC iaitu uh, VC over I RMS. So, kita akan dapat VC 1.5 given and this one is for 1.414. So, XC is equal to uh, berapa? Awak oh, cubalah kira eh. Uh, ataupun awak nak substitute terus. XC is equal to, look at here. Okay, jadi awak boleh cari terus XC. Lepas tu cari C ataupun you nak substitute XC terus which is 1 over okay, XC is equal to 1 over 2 pi FC. Ha, okay, XC is equal to 2 pi, eh sekejap, 2 pi FC equal to VC over IRMS. Okay, ha, so sekarang awak nak cari apa? Nak cari C kan? So dah akan jadi C ni. Bawa naik atas lah, dia akan jadi I RMS over 2 pi F VC equal to C lah. Ha, macam tu. Okay. Hmm, so, bolehlah cari. Cumanya sekarang, dia trik lagi kat awak. Kenapa soalan dia trik lagi? Dia tak ada frekuensi. Okay. Dekat mana nak cari frekuensi? So, frequency, remember omega is 2 pi f, frequency is equal to omega over 2 pi. Okay, so from the equation, okay, we can get the value of omega is equal to 100 pi, right? So, frequency is equal to 100 pi over 2 pi, it's equal to 50, okay? 50 hertz. So, you boleh masuklah dalam ni. Ha, sekarang dah siap. Bolehlah masuk IRMS 1.141 over 2 pi frequency 50 hertz. VC soalan dah bagi 1.5. Okay. And this is equal to C. Okay. And therefore, C is equal to berapa tu? 3 exponent negative 3 farad. Okay. So, dapat jawapan. Okay. Ha, dia agak tricky sikit sebab Okay, you nak dapat XC ni. Ha, ini ada dua cara lah saya kata tadi. Ha, sampai sini awak cari dulu XC. Ataupun yang ni saya substitute je terus. Okay. Saya dah tahu XC equal to 1 over 2 pi FC. Sebab dia tak bagi kita frekuensi kat sini. Okay. So, dia suruh kita buat kerja sikit lah. Cari dulu what is the frekuensi. Boleh. Okay. okay, untuk soalan B, okay, tengok soalan B pula. Okay, we have a coil having inductance of 0 0.14 Henry. So, the inductance is 0 0.14 Henry. Okay, and the resistance is given 12 ohm. Okay, and... The resistance is 12 ohm. Okay, dua je. So, RL circuit. Okay. And it is connected across 110 volt. So, VRMS. Okay. So, voltage that supply to the circuit. So, VRMS is 110 volt. And the frequency is equal to 25 hertz. Okay, calculate the current in the coil. So, we want to calculate what is the current in the coil. The IRMS kan? Hmm. Okay, macam mana kita nak cari? So, this is combination of R and L. Tadi R dengan C kan? Okay. So, R and L. So, we want to find what is the current here. IRMS. So, make sure kita cari dululah berapa dia punya total reactance iaitu impedance. Okay, Z is equal to square root R squared plus XL squared. Okay, sebab apa? Okay, sebab kita nak cari IRMS. So, kita dah ada VRMS equal to IRMS Z. Okay, ha, so yang ni kita nak guna formula ni nanti. Okay, so now kita carilah dulu Z kita. Okay, di mana ha, Z is equal to, okay, XL kena cari dulu. Okay, XL, remember equation of XL is equal to 2 pi fl. So, soalan dah bagi dah frekuensi L. Okay, substitute all the values given. Then, XL, you akan dapat 22 ohm. 
Therefore, Z, how to calculate Z? Square root R, R kita 12 squared plus 22 squared. Okay, and Z, you will get Z is equal to hmm, 25.06 ohm. 25.06 ohm. Okay, so substitute here. Okay, we want to find IRMS where IRMS is equal to VRMS over Z. Okay, so VRMS is 110 over 25.06 and finally IRMS is equal to 4.39 Ampere. Okay, so this is the answer. Oh, sorry. So this is the answer. Okay, and second part. The phase angle between the current and the supply voltage. Okay. The phase angle between the current and the supply voltage. Okay. So, remember. Okay. If we have the phase diagram. Okay. So, we do have VR. And it in phase with the current. Okay. So, we have VL. And this is VRMS. Okay. So, tengok eh. Betul-betul. Kalau phase diagram dah in terms of voltage, so semua ni mesti voltage lah. VR kat sini rumput, okay. VL ke atas langit, okay. And the resultant between VL and VR is the VRMS. So we want to calculate what is the phase angle between okay, current and the supply voltage. So inilah supply voltage kita. Okay. And this is current. The current and VR is in phase. Okay. So, nak cari ini. Phase angle. So, kita bolehlah. Uh, kita ada ke value VR. Kita tak ada kan. Okay. Uh, kalau kata, cikgu saya nak guna. Okay. Kalau yang ada kata, madam boleh tak saya nak guna cos V equal to VR over VRMS. Boleh. Tak ada masalah. Tapi sekarang kita tak ada pun value VR ni. Okay. Ha, kita kena cari dulu berapa value VR. Okay, kalau you nak cari, tak ada masalah. Okay, so V is equal to cos, okay, inverse cos. VR adalah IRMS, you dah kira dah pun tadi darab dengan R, bahagi dengan uh, VRMS. VRMS soalan dah bagi. Cuba kira, dapat tak? Okay, ha, so dia akan dapatlah nilai dia. Ha, iaitu, Uh, 61.3 Okay, ini cara yang pertama lah Okay, so kita guna phasor diagram In terms of voltage Ataupun kita boleh juga guna Phasor diagram in terms of impedance Okay, maknanya Kalau kat sini kita ada R Kat sini kita ada uh, Apa nama ni? Sini XL And this is Z Okay, remember We do have value of Z and R. We already know. Okay, R kita dah tahu dah tadi soalan bagi. 12 ohm. Z is 25.06 ohm. Okay. So, nilai yang dekat sini yang saya highlightkan dengan warna uh, turquoise sini, nilai sini, dengan sini sama. Okay. So, nak guna mana-mana phase diagram pun boleh. Tak ada masalah. Okay. Okay. So, kalau kita nak kira, kita guna cos phi equal to R over Z, phase angle equal to inverse cos R over Z. You substitute all the values, you akan dapat, okay, phi is equal to 61.3. So, the phase angle between the current, okay, sama lah. The phase, soalan tanya, the phase angle between the current and the supply voltage, inilah. Okay, this is the phase angle. Okay, nak guna cara ni boleh tapi ingat cari dulu VR ataupun you nak guna phase diagram okay, in terms of impedance. Okay, you dapat jawapan yang sama. Okay, boleh. Okay, the power factor. Okay, number three, the power factor. Okay, remember uh, the power factor masukkan je lah. Power factor is cos phi, right? Okay, so you dah ada tadi phase angle. You can straightly uh, find lah uh, power factor. Okay, power factor is equal to cos phi. And it's equal to cos 61.3 degree. 
Okay, make sure your calculator in degree this time. 61.3 degree. Okay, angle eh. So, power factor you akan dapat 0.48. Okay, nak, tak ada unit eh, power factor. Ataupun you nak guna power factor cos phi is equal to R over Z. Okay, pun boleh juga. R tadi kita dah dapat. Okay, soalan bagi 12. Z kita dah tahu. Which is the value is 25. And then the answer is 0.48. Okay, so this is the answer. Boleh. And the last one is the power loss. Okay, so this is very important. Loss. Okay, ataupun uh, soalan boleh tanya juga. Uh, power loss ataupun apa dia? Power supply. Okay. Power supplied by the source. Dia membawa maksud yang sama lah. Equation yang sama. Ataupun dia katanya power dissipated. Okay, ataupun apa? Power average. Okay, so we will use this equation. P is equal to I RMS squared R. Okay, so substitute lah. I RMS is equal to 4.39, sorry, squared R is 12. Okay, therefore, the final answer... Power loss is equal to 232.3 watt. Okay. Nah, watch check eh. Tekan calculator. Rajin-rajin tekan calculator. Supaya kita tak careless masa exam. Okay. So finish question number 5. So let's proceed to question number 6.